There's some misinformation going on out there surrounding the Nintendo Switch 2, and it's really important we talk about this because it's being stated by people who I deeply respect and are essentially authority figures in the world of tech analysis when it comes to video games. And I am, of course, talking about Digital Foundry, and look, they've done some amazing work, and I really do appreciate everything they've done. They recently did an excellent analysis of Hogwarts Legacy on Nintendo Switch, just to give them some credit for things that they do extremely well. But there was some recent information that came out that we need to talk about. But beyond that, there's also a really interesting theory out there for when Nintendo Switch 2 is going to be unveiled based on an actual pattern that might be appearing from Nintendo that is quite interesting. And then, yeah, we have some NSO updates, including the fact that Nintendo has to launch an 18-plus app in japan that's right nso 18 plus is being launched in japan i i kid you not this is a real thing that's happening but let's just jump back to the switch 2 stuff before we get into that and we're talking about richard ledbetter over on digital foundry they recently did a digital foundry direct where they went in depth a little bit talking about the nintendo switch 2 and in particular someone asked them about the idea of nintendo making a home console again and while they dismiss that because they don't think that's actually what's happening they did talk about a key feature for nintendo switch 2 some limitations on it and we got to actually talk about it because there is some misinformation including surprising misinformation from richard himself on a technology that i'm not sure that he fully understands and i don't blame him for not understanding it it seems to come from a good place, a good intended place, but not one that is rooted in reality. So let's talk about this. So in that response, he said, there was the question mark over the cost of DLSS, so deep learning super sampling, and whether Nintendo is going to include a deep learning accelerator, similar to the one that was in the T234, which by the way, it's for smart vehicles. Anyways, which would effectively make DLSS free, or at least a lot less computationally expensive. I've had sources come forward saying there's no deep learning accelerator in the T239, which is the rumored chip inside the Nintendo Switch 2. And then he says, which would limit the viability of DLSS quite significantly. He goes on to note that without DLA, it's unlikely the console would be able to upscale the 4K. And it would be more realistic to expect 1080p or maybe 1440p if you're lucky, depending on the game. Now, That just sounds like a lot of bad news, right? We've heard about the 4K upscaling. We've heard about the demos at Gamescom that seem to contradict what he's saying. And he's basing all this on a test he did, right? He took a, I think, believe it was a 2050 or a 3050 or whatever it was in a laptop. He downclocked it, by the way, to clocks that are way lower than what even the Nintendo Switch runs. So I don't know why he went that low with the clocks when the Nintendo Switch itself runs at higher clocks. The Switch 2 is not going to run at lower clocks than the original Nintendo Switch. That doesn't even make sense. But beyond all of that, uh, it didn't have very much VRAM. The Switch 2 likely has more VRAM and a whole bunch of other stuff. It's basically not an apples-to-apples comparison. He notes that, by the way, in that video. He was just trying to do his best estimation, and his estimation was off. uh, But his estimation was dealing with the fact that, oh, it's not upscaling very well and all of this stuff. For starters, we don't even know how many Tensor cores there even are on the T239, but... That's neither here nor there, because according to Lick, who LIC over on Fami Boards, Deep Learning Accelerator isn't even a factor in DLSS performance in the first place. So the uh, claim that DLA actually impacts DLSS is apparently just not even a true statement, which is important because DLA is not really in any of the GPUs that has DLSS that we use for gaming. It's in the T234, which that accelerator is dealing with smart cars and dealing with the things that they need. It's not dealing with graphical performance and DLSS. So there already was a bit of a red flag when DLA is not even something being used in modern GPUs, but that's besides the point. He notes tensor cores were specifically designed directly for DLSS and DLSS was designed directly for tensor cores. They they were designed together. They're intended to work together. And he notes further testing doesn't really show a noticeable benefit to having DLA versus not for the purpose of upscaling games. This means we're left with just the original findings of that video that Digital Foundry put out 
with DLSS performance, except the chipset that they're using is not the same Cloxus Switch 2, nor is it using the same CPU, nor the same RAM, or even close to the same available video RAM. In other words, it's a very rudimentary comparison, and we really don't know how well DLSS would perform on the T239 chip. And that's really where I wanted to get those corrections in, because I'm seeing this story go out there now, and honestly, when I saw a Spawn Wave uh, run his news wave this morning talking about this, realizing that DLA is not that big of a deal and that DLA really has nothing to do with upscaler performance and that this just shows some of the flaws in what Richard Ledbetter was doing in his comparison, I do think that while they're tempering expectations and you certainly shouldn't expect this to be like a PlayStation 5 level system in terms of power output, Look, I don't think you, we should just be dismissing DLSS as it's not going to make a difference. Again, we still don't know the number of RT cores. We still don't know all of the stuff that's going to be in there. We don't know the number of tensor cores. We don't know enough about the T239. And the things we do know and have been shown that we've discovered through you know various leaks and everything are very promising. If, if we're hearing from you know, actual game developers that Nintendo had a 4K Breath of the Wild. They had a, you know, potentially 4K, although they didn't really clarify that, uh, but massively ray traced version of the Matrix demo running. I, we have no reason at this point to really doubt what was said or shown. So I, I think he's just trying to throw some water on a fire that hasn't really began burning yet until Nintendo unveils it, saying that, hey, we should stop expecting 4K. I don't agree with this assessment, and I do think that Nintendo knows what they're doing. I think NVIDIA knows what they're doing, and I think it'll be up to the developers to decide if they want to push it up to 4K or not. But again, just throwing out there that all of this news you're hearing about the Deep Learning Accelerator technically has nothing to do with upscaling and wouldn't make DLSS free. There's no such thing as free. It uses tensor cores. Tensor cores were specifically designed for the purposes of deep learning super sampling. DLA does not, nothing for that. It, 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 it theoretically does. It, it's a, well, it could, but it doesn't. And that's why modern GPUs don't use it. Anyways, now before we dive into more stuff on Nintendo Switch 2, because yes, there is more, Guys, I want you to subscribe to the channel because of course I do. We have this goal to get to like 150,000 subscribers someday. I don't know what's going to happen with that. But we do have free cookies raining down so you guys can maybe enjoy these Oreo cookies exclusively for our subscribers. And you know what? Maybe drop a like. And you know, I, I don't want to waste any more of your time. Let's, let's get back to talking about Nintendo Switch 2, you know, the fun stuff. Moving on, we have more to talk about with Nintendo Switch 2 because there's a... Interesting thing, if you pay attention closely to what Nintendo is doing, that could indicate when we're going to hear about the Nintendo Switch 2. So back in May of 2021, Nintendo announced a 10%, or what turned out to be, they didn't say it was 10%, a gold point increase if you renewed your NSO membership for 12 months. Now, this was really cool because it meant over the next 12 months, any digital purchases you get, hey, you get a 10% bonus on your gold points. Well, roughly four months after that, they did announce the Nintendo Switch OLED. Now, yesterday, they announced the exact same promotion, except with a 20% bonus to gold coins. And if this does represent a pattern, which just would be the second time, so if it does happen this time, now it's a pattern, that sets Switch 2 to be revealed in March of 2024. Very interesting, because that date has been floated out there from developers at Gamescom. Now... Nintendo has mentioned how important Nintendo accounts are, and we know that Nintendo Switch Online is tied directly to Nintendo accounts. Here's what Nintendo said at the general meeting of shareholders Q&A on June 23rd, 2023. Regarding the transition to the next generation platform, in the past, hardware was the only way for us to connect with our consumers. And so with each new platform, we needed to rebuild our relationships. Regarding the move from Nintendo Switch to the next generation platform, we will make good use of Nintendo account to make this a smooth transition for the consumers. Now, this was also reiterated in an interview with Nikkei from Nintendo CEO and President Furukawa on August 3rd of 2023. Regarding Nintendo account, I can't speak to the specifics, but it is important to continue the relationship with our customers, which was reset each time we developed a new console. 
Then the plan was actually given more context in the corporate management policy briefing on November 8, 2023. Furukawa said, prior to the introduction of Nintendo account, it was not easy to maintain user information across platform generations. Nintendo account made it possible to tie user history to their personal account. This will be a foundation upon which Nintendo can maintain a lasting relationship with consumers. Now, I need to give full credit to FWB-BWD over at Family Boards for putting all of this information together. And it is notable that Nintendo of Europe has run similar promotions, but both times, this time and last time, were you know a few months to a month before this promotion ran. So the NOE stuff is part of it, just with a longer distance to announcement. Now, this is all just really, really fascinating to think about. The March date is really sort of that expectation date at this point. We know Nate the Hate recently did a podcast, and they kind of reiterated March as well. A few podcasts, in fact. So, look, I, we're just going to have to sit back and wait and see when Nintendo Switch 2 gets announced, but it is pretty exciting. But you know what's also interesting talking about Nintendo accounts? What about Jet Force Gemini? What the heck? Nintendo announced Jet Force Gemini for NSO. Yes, seriously. Um, they put out a tweet that says, Adventure calls in the galaxy of Jet Force Gemini coming to Nintendo Switch for Nintendo Switch Online plus expansion pack members this December. It is a rare game, and the interesting part is that it's a new N64 game announcement when they haven't finished delivering all of the games promised when they added N64 to the NSO service. You know, a certain 1080 snowboarding game isn't here yet, and we have now this new game being added. Uh, now... The funny thing is the story doesn't end here because GoldenEye 007 is being dropped in Japan alongside this game in December, but that's not it because Nintendo is also launching an adult-only NSO app in Japan. It does sound sort of hilarious, but this is strictly due to Japanese law. GoldenEye 007 and Jet Force Gemini are both rated Z by Cero, and this is CERO, this is the ratings board, and it is the only game rating that the government regulates. It does not allow the sale of Z-rated games to anyone under the age of 18. For such games to be available, even on a digital service, it must be in one that is separate from other games. So Nintendo had to launch, or will be launching, a second Nintendo 64 app they are calling Nintendo 64 Online 18 Plus just to have these two games on the service. Isn't that funny that like they got to launch this 18 Plus thing just because of the government? And the funny thing is, Technically, M ratings are regulated here in the U.S. as well, and they're not supposed to be available you know, to anyone who's not you know over the age of seventeen or whatever. I, I, I find it funny because they didn't have to make a separate app here. You know, it is what it is. Just sort of part of the general user agreement, I suppose. I don't know. It's kind of funny that they have to launch a completely separate app for those two specific games. But it is nice that they're willing to do it. That way, Japanese gamers have access to GoldenEye 007 and Jet Force Gemini. Uh, Jet Force Gemini is sort of interesting. It had a weird multiplayer aspect to it. Uh, that didn't control very well back in the day. So I'm very interested in, in the controls for it. Obviously, we know they sort of messed up the controls with GoldenEye. Uh, I know with the N64 controller, it's fine. But otherwise, you got to go in and really uh, customize your control settings in order to make it work. And you got to customize it on the system level. Hopefully, that's not the case with Jeff Force Gemini and they let you custom in-game. And not only that, uh, maybe the controls should just be set properly in the first place. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. They'll obviously be online multiplayer like there is for all the NSO stuff for that multiplayer mode. It's, it's just really nice to see these games get added. Anyways, guys, that's what I got for you here uh, today, this early this afternoon, whenever this video drops. Uh, you guys are awesome, and I'll catch you in the next video.